So we have completed in the last class till enzymes and the catalyst. Now we are going to uh, discuss how to measure the rate of reaction. So basically, uh, to measure the rate of reaction, we have two uh, different ways. First is we can measure the rate of reaction by observing a change in mass when the reaction occurred. So this reaction, uh, this can be done for the reactions in which the gas are the products, okay? In any reaction in which gas is formed, we can do, uh, we can adopt this method and we can use this method to find the rate of a reaction. So what we will do, uh, if you see over here, we put a reaction vessel on a conveying balance, then, add reactant in it and as soon as we add the reactants we put a cotton wool and start the stopwatch so then we record the time for example when we start the stopwatch at that time it's time zero and at that time we record the mass and then for example we choose the uh, time interval as a one minute so after every one minute we will record the mass that how much mass is there why we put a cotton wool because as the gas is forming, so gas escapes from this, and as gas escapes from this, uh, the mass decreases. But the other thing is that most of the time the reaction is vigorous, so the liquid may spit out. So if the liquid would spit out, then due to the spitting of the liquid, the mass would decrease, which will cause an error. So that's why we put a cotton wool. So if it tries to spit, that liquid is gets soaked in cotton wool and dead, and didn't doesn't able to escape the cotton wool. So there will be no decrease due to the spitting of a liquid. That's why we put a cotton wool over here. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay, just complete the diagram, then we will continue further.
Yes, everybody done with the diagram and the equation. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Uh, before starting the reaction, we will uh, load the time or uh, we will like fix the time. Like we have to do. No, for example, we minutes. start the stopwatch when we measure the initial mass. We, for example, if we are recording the time, like let's suppose we are recording the time in the second and mass in grams. So for let's suppose at zero time, it's 150. Now, when the 60 minutes have been passed, now we will look over here. What is the mass? For example, it's 145. Is it understandable? Yes. Okay. Now, this is the method noted down. So marble is basically limestone calcium carbonate. We put them in the flask, then add an acid, then quickly plug the flask with the cotton wool and then we weigh the mass and start the clock at the same time. Then at regular intervals, we record the mass until the reaction is stopped. How we could, how would we know that reaction is stopped that the further decrease in mass is stopped? It indicates that the reaction would is stopped and as during the reaction, the gas is escaping, so the mass decreases gradually. Are you guys done with this? Yes, sir. Okay. No. We have another method. where we uh, observe the change in volume of a gas form. So it is again for the reactions in which gases are formed. But now instead of a wine ballast, which we put it over here, we place a gas syringe. And as the reaction proceeds, the gas forms and collected over here, which pushes the plunger outward. And as a result, the gas is collected. And at, as it's graduated, it has a scale. So we are able to record the mass of gas formed during the reaction. 
Is this understandable? Yes, sir. I will discuss the method. First, complete the diagrams, please. Sir, can you please repeat that again? Oh. Now, see, instead of a weighing balance, we put a gas syringe. And if you see that gas syringe has a scale, it's graduated. So as the gas form, it's all, there is only this space from here, the gas moves over here. And as it moves over here, it uh, pushes the plunger to the move outside. And as a result, the gas is collected. See, for example, this will happen. When the gas comes, so it as a whole moves outside. Okay. So we are able to record the volume of the gas which is formed during the reaction. Okay, now complete the diagram quickly. Assalamu alaikum wa Are you guys done with the diagram? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. No. How we will perform this reaction? We put a dilute hydrochloric acid in the flask for this reaction. Then we drop a magnesium ribbon into the flask and insert the stopper and syringe immediately. And at the same time, we will start the stopwatch to record the mass. Now we will uh, Record the volume that is collected in gas syringe at different intervals, but initially it is zero. But then as the gas start forming, we will get the volume collected in the gas syringe and we will record it at equal intervals until the reaction is completed.
sir uh, i have a question yes that we always play, put uh, right dilute uh, before the acid right sorry what we put we always uh, write dilute before we write any acid yeah right? yes okay it is because normally if it's not dilute it's concentrated then we cannot use it because it's it's you know it's 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 corrosive okay so normally reactions in labs we use dilute hydrochloric acid sir done okay yes khatija and aisha are you guys also done Sir, wait a minute, please. Yeah, sure. Done, sir. Okay, yes, Aisha, are you done? Okay. Now this is the question for you guys. Now, the reaction, the equation they have been asking for, we have discussed that equation many times in metals and then as an acid and bases. So I want you guys to write the equation and WhatsApp me. Sir, I have sent you on the Zoom chat. Okay. No, your formula is wrong. The formula of salt is wrong. What about you? 
Aisha and Mustafa. So, have a look over here. The reaction is between a metal and an acid. So, we know one thing, a hydrogen is formed. So, this hydrogen goes to make hydrogen gas. So, we are left with the magnesium ion with a plus 2 charge and chloride ion with a minus 1 charge. So, when we make the formula, the formula will be MgCl2. Right? So, you always need to work on the charges of ions to make the correct formula. Otherwise, you guys will do the mistake. Is this clear? Then, as there are two chlorine and two hydrogen, so we'll put a two over here. Okay. Now, can anyone tell me how we will make the graph? Can I write graph? Yes. Laka shukara bata. Yes. So the graph would be like this. For example, uh, initially it's lying A at a specific temperature. So obviously in initially the amount of the reactants would be higher. So the amount volume, the gradient would be higher for the formation of volume, for the formation of the gas. And when the reaction ends, it turns horizontal. Is this clear? Now, in part two, if you see, they ask yes, if hydrogen carries out the experiment at a lower temperature, all other conditions are remains the same. So, on axis above, draw the line to show how the volume of gas produced with this time and label line this line B. So see, it's a lower temperature. So we just lowers the temperature and we didn't do anything else. So it means that the amount of product formed will be the same, but obviously it's as a, there is a lower temperature. So the gradient would be the lesser. And finally, it also goes, uh, the same volume will be formed. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. Complete this, then we will discuss further. Yes, is everybody done till here? Yes, sir. Ms. Khatija and Aisha. Okay, Mustafa. Yes, sir. Okay. Now have a look at this question. Read the information correctly and then tell me the all three answers.
Yes, so which property we have to keep same for hydrogen peroxide solution? Temperature. No, temperature would be the same. We are not changing. We are not heating, not cooling, right? So it's the same. What we have to do, we have to change the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide solution, right? In the first statement. So it means if we are changing the concentration, we make sure that every time when we use the hydrogen peroxide solution, its volume would be same. Is this understandable? Sir, can you please explain it? Yeah, obviously. See, for example, if I'm using 100 ml, 100 centimeter cube of a solution in the first experiment, and uh, it's of some concentration, and in the second experiment, I'm using a different concentration solution, but I will make sure that the volume of the solution would same. I always use 100 centimeter cube of a solution, isn't it? Yes. So the volume, if the if the concentration is changing, then we would take keep the volume of the solution same. Now for magnesium peroxide, what would we keep the same? It's a solid, right? So for solid mass. Yeah, very good. We keep the mass same. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of the cotton wool? As I have discussed earlier, we put we use the cotton wool to make sure that no spitting of the liquid would take place. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, Aisha and Mustafa. Hello. G, sir. Okay. Now, if you see here, they have shown you the graph. Then they are saying that why does the balance rating decrease decreasing during the experiment? So we know the balance rating is decreasing during the experiment. As in the reaction, the hydrogen gas is forming, right? So the gas is forming and the gas is keeping from it. So that's why this mass is decreasing. Then why does the slope of the curve indicates about the reaction? It indicates that the rate of reaction decreasing gradually. Why? Because if you see from here, the gradient is greater and here the gradient is smaller and even here it gets more smaller. The, the gradient of the line is decreasing as the reaction proceeds. So it, if it's decreasing, which means the rate of reaction also decreases. Is this clear? Yes, sir. No, what they are saying? No. See, they, they are saying that balance reading is decreasing. So it's it's understood if the balance reading is decreasing, so the mass is decreasing, right? Yes. Now they are saying that slope of curve, what slope of curve is indicating. So see the slope of curve is initially it's higher, it's greater. And as the time passes, it gets smaller. The slope, the gradient gets lower, isn't it? So the change, the decrease in gradient, the, the decrease in the slope is indicating us that the rate of reaction is decreasing. It means the rate is getting slower as the time passes. Is this clear? Yes, is this clear? If there is any confusion, please ask. Yes, Khadija, Aisha and Mustafa, if you guys have any confusion, please ask. No, sir, it's clear. Okay. Now, what they are saying, how long does the reaction take to complete? So, it is ending at 10. So, it doesn't mean it's 10. You have to look for the line, for the point where the line becomes straight. So, if you see the line gets straight from here, so it's 8 minutes. So, I'm going to write 8 minutes. Is this clear? Yes, sir, clear. Okay, so our this chapter is completed. I have shared this PDF in the WhatsApp group as well. So in the next class, we are going to start with the reversible reactions, okay? And okay, the next class will be after the next weekend on Tuesday and Thursdays. So it means that today is 11th, right? 
So yes. from 17 and 18, we are, are not going to conduct the classes and we will be starting from the next Tuesday, not the coming Tuesday, from the next Tuesday. And then again, we will have a same time and dates, Tuesday and Thursdays from 4 to 5, right? Mm. Okay, sir. Okay, take care, everyone. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.